11 minutes to touchdown. Uh, communications now through the Merritt Island tracking station in Florida. Discovery, take TACANS, take GPS. Under five minutes from touchdown, uh, views of Discovery now as it approaches the Kennedy Space Center from the uh, southwest. Altitude 55,000 feet, range to the landing site 68 miles. Or 32 miles at altitude, uh, again, down to almost 50,000 feet. The sink rate is about 260 feet per second. Under Lee Archambault now flying Discovery. Approaching the uh, imaginary heading alignment cone or cylinder as he begins a 260 degree uh, turn. Twin sonic booms uh, announcing Discovery's arrival in the landing site. Tony Antonelli, the pilot of the vehicle, now taking his turn for a few seconds, uh, flying Discovery around the heading alignment circle. Discovery, on at the 180. Discovery copies, on at the 180. Pilot Tony Antonelli now handing the stick back to Commander Lee Archambault, who now has uh, control of Discovery for the remainder of the flight. Discovery, on at the 90. On at the 90. 19,000 feet in altitude, uh, range 11 miles from the uh, runway. Discovery's uh, velocity is down to 400 miles per hour. Discovery is on and on. Copy on and on. Runway's in sight. Discovery copy, runway in sight. About one minute to touchdown. Altitude uh, 5,800 feet. Commander Lee Archambault beginning to uh, flare the nose of Discovery up for final approach and landing. And landing gear is down.
Main gear touchdown. And nose gear touchdown. Space Shuttle Discovery is rolling out on runway 15 at the Kennedy Space Center, completing 201 orbits, 202 orbits of the Earth while traveling 5,304,000 miles. This landing marks the 70th shuttle mission to end at KSC. Discovery spent eight days docked to the International Space Station, leaving behind the first Japanese long-duration crew member and also leaving it more power capability, setting the stage for an increase to six-person crew in late May. Sandy Magnus, mission specialist, now aboard Discovery home after 134 days in space, 129 of those aboard the International Space Station. Discovery is completing the 36th voyage of its uh, life and the 125th, 125th space shuttle mission in the history of the program. Houston copies, we'll stop. Welcome home, Discovery, after a great mission to bring the International Space Station to full power. Special welcome home to Sandy after living and working on board ISS as a member of Expedition 18 and to the entire crew of STS-119. Great job, everybody. Discovery, thank you very much. It's good to be back home. Discovery, we have no post-landing deltas We'll meet you on page 5-3 of the entry checklist. See you there. Discovery Houston will take RAD reconfig on page 5 8. RAD reconfig on 5 8 and works. Good copy. Discovery APU hide shut down on page 5 9. It's going inward. Discovery, we're ready for APU hide shutdown. And Discovery, we are go for extended power up. Discovery, go for extended power up. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, Post-landing activities uh, still ongoing, e even while uh, we were enjoying the uh, various replays uh, of Discovery. This is Mission Control Houston. While post-landing activities continue on the runway at the Kennedy Space Center, following Discovery's 13-day, uh, 5.3 million mile journey, the uh, confirmation is has been received that uh, all seven crew members now are off the vehicle. Lee Archambault, Tony Antonelli, Steve Swanson, Joe Acaba, Ricky Arnold, John Phillips, and uh, returning expedition a crew member from the space station, Sandy Magnus, after 134 days in space, are all off the vehicle in the crew transport uh, vehicle. They'll be going through some routine uh, medical checkups. The vehicle will back away from the uh, orbiter, and uh, then some of the crew members uh, will uh, 
when the opportunity arises, we'll take a walk around uh, the vehicle, a traditional uh, walk around the uh, orbiter on the runway. Discovery's uh, mission ended at uh, 3.13 this afternoon, uh, Eastern Time, with a landing on runway 15, uh, completing uh, Discovery's mission. Here at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Space Shuttle Discovery is on Shuttle Landing Facility Runway 15 after 12 days, 19 hours, 30 minutes, and 15 seconds in space. The astronauts performed three spacewalks while at the station and delivered a fourth and final set of solar array wings and the S6 truss. The mission also took up the replacement unit for a system that converts urine to drinking water and delivered the first Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency's resident station crew member. The return flight brought home astronaut Sandy Magnus after 190 or 129 days in orbit. The seven astronauts have now moved from Shuttle Discovery into the Crew Transport Vehicle, or what's called a People Mover, while a convoy of more than 30 specially designed vehicles and a team of about 135 trained personnel contact, conduct the recovery operations. With me today to discuss these operations is Mike Kuda, the Manager of Integrated Landing Operations for the United Space Alliance. Mike, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Could you give me a little bit about um, what's going on down there at uh, the shuttle landing facility and what these operations are? Okay. Uh, you know, currently we're working the uh, the OMI, the Operation Maintenance Instruction Procedure, which is uh, SU-28, that uh, performs all the post-landing convoy operations on the uh, on the runway. Uh, in the forward portion of the orbiter, you can see to the left of the screen, we have the flight crew distow vehicle that will mate up to the white room vehicle which is currently being blocked right now by the crew transport vehicle as you mentioned earlier uh, crew egress is now complete once the uh, ctv backs away the uh, flight crew equipment vehicle and payload distow folks will go into the crew module and start removing some of the uh, time critical payload distows And we're standing by as the astro oh, astronauts are now departing the crew transport vehicle. So. Being greeted by Associate Administrator Chris Galise, and, or I'm sorry, the NASA Acting Administrator Chris Galise, Associate Administrator for Space Operations Bill Gerstenmeier. Uh, Deputy Program Manager for the Shuttle Program, Leroy Kane. Deputy Center Director for Kennedy Space Center, Janet Petro. Shuttle Launch Director, Mike Leinbach. That's Rita. Director of Shuttle Processing, Rita Wilcoxon. And Stephanie. Stephanie Stilson, the Vehicle Flow Director for Space Shuttle Discovery. Hi, I'm Lee Arshimo from the STS-119 crew, and uh, we're very happy to be back here in Florida. We want to certainly thank the, all the people at the Kennedy Space Center for, number one, getting Discovery ready for launch, uh, fighting through some uh, technical issues before we launched, they, but they got us ready and they got us launched safely. We had a very successful mission. We're very proud that we were able to bring up the S-6 Trust, the final power segment for the International Space Station, and we're very, very happy we were able to bring Discovery right back here to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So to everyone at the Kennedy Space Center, thank you very much for the, the great job leading up to the launch, and thank you very much for uh, coming out here today. Take care.
the crew of Space Shuttle Discovery's STS-119 mission and check out building. And post-landing convoy operations continue on the runway. Approximately two hours since landing occurred, and we have probably uh, another hour and a half to two hours to go prior to picking up with tow operations to the OPF. And as you can see, the astronauts are now departing the shuttle landing facility. This concludes NASA's television's continuous coverage of the STS-119 mission. We expect to have a crew news conference with Discovery's astronauts about five or so hours past landing time. Please join us at no earlier than 5.30 p.m. Eastern for the post-landing news conference. Again, welcome home, Discovery.